Hi guys, welcome to my fishing tackle channel. Just wanted to show you another way of making a drop shot. I guess this works for uh, bass fishing, but I use this for specifically salt water. So you just need hooks and the fluorocarbon line. Any hooks that you want to use and then a couple beads like this I have the black ones are the rubber one more stiffer one red ones are actually plastic and then the green ones are going dark one and they have different purposes um, the rubber ones are prefer for me because the plastic um, it's hard so if you have a lot of tension in your line and if you do catch a big fish it could it could actually tear so with the plastic it's there's a resistance so if you're putting a lot of tension it's gonna rip and then the rubber beads that I'm using they cut through so it, it it's like a cushion so it'll slowly cut through, but then it'll keep attention and it won't cut the line. So that's something to keep in mind. And the hook, uh, this hook is something that I got as a winner for a giveaway. And basically you um, get the line through both beads and the hook. And then if you can see, you take one line and go through the eyes and through a bead. And then the other line, do the same thing through the eye and then the other side of the bead so it's pretty simple compared to the drop shot that I made before this one is um, recommended if you guys are trying to basically um, determine I mean move the hooks up and down so I have another video that's drop hook and it's a fixed line but for this one, you could actually uh, move the hooks. You, so you could loosen the lines and move it upside up and down. So if you want the drop shot to be more further, farther up from the sinker, you would you you could actually move it up higher. If you wanted for a more bottom fish, if you feel like the flounder or halibut you're catching you're targeting are not as active then you could bring down the hooks so these are jerk shad um, the daimiki is a brand and this one i don't think you could get it from the states i, I got this when i worked in korea so you could get these in korea and japan and you know, most asian countries i think even australia but not in the state side i've tried looking for it this version you could get art, uh, something similar from daimiki dami um called armor shad but not specifically for this one so the hook has a little um holder it has a little spike so for instance if you look carefully you could actually push far enough that it'll hook through the the bait so what it does is if a flounder or any fish um, doesn't get hooked then it bites or pulls the the tail of it uh, you don't have to reset it because it'll the bait itself will stay intact um, if you don't have that most likely when you don't hook the fish all the way there's a chance of um, most of the body getting pulled out and it's not going to give a good presentation as you can see so uh, you might not get any bites until and you won't even know until you bring it back up and reset the, the shad so here's a quick look of how it would look in the bottom of the water so like I said I use this for saltwater fishing and it pretty much catches everything in the east coast I guess the only fish that wouldn't bite on this is um, blackfish the tog is something you won't get but um, most flounders I've caught flounders with this rig and because it's attached directly to the main line whether 
if it's bluefish or Spanish mackerel, anything that bites, or even ribbon fish. I've had ribbon fish go after uh, this bait. I, um, fortunately, I never caught it because it bit like through the the farther end of the tail. So it just chopped off. It was like I didn't even feel it. I just felt something thumping, and then next thing you know, it could have been a flounder too. But most likely, it was a ribbon fish. But you don't have to worry about any of the fish um, cutting through the line because that's a worry, right? If you do a dropper loop, you unless this one is a 17 pound, so it's very thin and it cuts through the water really well, even with strong water current, there's no resistance. So most of the time you're using 40, 50 pound um, because you're targeting um, fish with like flounder right It'll, they have sharp teeth so they could cut through the line easily if you have a dropper loop but the problem issue with that is if you have a thick like a 50 pound what it does is if there's a big fast water current or if you're drifting the line is going to float meaning it's going to it's going to push up so you're not going to be able to hold bottom unless you go 10 ounce or higher but i've Held bottom easily with the 17, 15 pound line, line fluorocarbon, which cuts through. It's very thin, right? It's like silk, so it holds bottom because there's no water while it's drifting. It easily cuts through the water and it stays bottom, so very low resistance. So here's the swivel that I'm attaching um, to the end that I would hook up to my main line and then here's a uh, the bottom end that I would use for my sinker to hook the sinker up so that's the sinker um, it has a easy hookup right there and as you can see I didn't do a um, improved clinch lot on the bottom one because I do want that to come off if it does if the if the sinker gets stuck somewhere in the reef or wreck I want the sinker at least the swivel too easy to easily come off but hope you enjoyed it and try making this rig it's a great rig and uh, I'll see you guys next time make sure to subscribe and like this video thanks